Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, the ID card section springs a leak. A special trip for the Jazz Ambassadors. The Freedom Inn serves a capacity crowd. These stories and more. But first, the annual Army-Navy game is scheduled for December 8th. Fort Meade's Army-Navy flag football game, not until December 5th. So why today, on this last day of November, did the Navy choose to start the hostilities? No one really knows, but by the time our camera got to the garrison headquarters this morning, the building and surrounding trees had already been adorned with blue and gold streamers. Go Navy, Beat Army was painted on the steps leading up to the front door. Additionally, and this doesn't bode well for the Navy this year, they targeted the garrison command sergeant major's house as well. The only problem, they got the wrong house. Navy elements on Fort Meade last year also helped decorate before the game. It didn't really help. Last year's score, Army 26, Navy nothing. Garrison Commander Colonel Ed Rothstein Friday morning vowed that the Army would retaliate. And despite this morning's events, the Navy will get their chance to exact revenge on the playing field Wednesday, December 5th. The West Anne Arundel Chamber of Commerce is once again sponsoring this year's event. There will be hamburgers, hot dogs, hot chocolate, and much more, all free of charge. In other news, Building 2234, home to the Human Resources Directorate, Navy personnel, the ID card section, and more, suffered a broken water pipe last weekend, forcing the shutdown of most services. For several days this week, ID card customers were being referred to the Air National Guard offices in Baltimore. However, despite the continuing cleanup effort, the ID card section opened up for business Thursday afternoon. And as it turns out, news of the leak and resulting damage might have scared away some customers. Thursday afternoon's waiting room was fairly empty. Cleanup in the building is still taking place. We recommend calling the appropriate office before heading over to Building 2234. Meanwhile, Fort Meade's Freedom Hall Dining Facility made Thanksgiving a special day for more than 500 service members, retirees, DOD civilians, and their families. Freedom Hall officials anticipated that during the formal Thanksgiving service between 11 and 2 that they would serve about 350 folks. When Fox 5 reporter Tom Fitzgerald showed up at the noon hour, officials reported that more than 300 meals had already been served in the first hour and a half. Garrison Commander Colonel Ed Rothstein led the contingent of Fort Meade leadership in serving dinner to the troops. All told, the Freedom Men prepared 360 pounds of turkey, a pair of 40-pound whole roasted pigs, 140 pounds of roast beef, 120 pounds of ham, 80 pounds of Cornish game hens, 120 pounds of shrimp, and well, you get the picture. The final tally, 527 meals served, and according to the Freedom Men, very little was left over. Elsewhere, as we've been reporting, the U.S. Army Field Band Signature Concert of the Season, The Sound of the Bells, is coming up next Thursday, December 6th, at the Meade Senior High School Auditorium. The event is free, but you must have a ticket. Log on to www.armyfieldband.com for details. Meanwhile, we in the Fort Meade community are lucky to have the field band headquartered right here, especially considering their extensive touring schedule. The Jazz Ambassadors recently made a trip that the field band hadn't made for decades. The field band's Jonathan Agee has more. Well, I think the Alaska tour came up as an opportunity where we had had the time to do it, just, just the right bit of time in, in September. And uh, the Jazz Ambassadors had not been there for, I believe it was 31 years at that point. So it was long overdue for us to go up there. Phenomenal show for you know this little corner of uh, America for sure. Um, we have not seen the likes of it, and I don't expect that we'll see the likes of it <laughs> anytime again in the future. It was a wonderful show. Um, I know in Fairbanks we were able to hit a number of schools and send all of our clinic teams out at once. We're speaking jazz, okay? That's how we do it: is we listen to it, we internalize it, and then we create our own. My daughter played the trombone with them and that was a really fun thing so she was just a chatterbox last night at home because she uh, got a chance to hear some what she said was some of the best trombone players that's in her life. You know, I really wanted my kids and their parents to see what the potential is. Um, you know, we're building a music program here in Seward, and I think that this is the timing is absolutely perfect. And I really do expect that this is going to inspire really the next generation of musicians from Seward. And finally, next Friday, December 7th, the annual Garrison Tree Lighting Ceremony takes place on McLaughlin Parade Field. Crews are busily getting the 40 foot plus tree decorated and ready for Friday's festivities. The tree lighting ceremony starts at 5 p.m. In case of bad weather, the ceremony will move indoors to the post main chapel. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.